How many of you remember the time that growing up, perhaps, when you went to church, you wore your Sunday best? I mean, that was a rule, hard, fast rule. Anybody? Oh, yeah. yeah. My mama, we, we lived out in the country, and my mama, she said, you have to wear your Sunday best. You know, it's the idea, I guess, you know, that you uh, give your best to Jesus. I, I guess that's what it's all about. I don't know. But you know what the church has been criticized for? Well, you know, I'm not interested in going to church. You know, everybody goes to church. They put on their fancy stuff. They're just showing off. But, you know, we're in a place in the church today. You know, we get to wear more casual clothes. And uh, so we're not going to talk about the outward. That's easy. Anybody can put on a suit or a pair of slacks. Now, personally, I like to dress Bible. Yeah, I got my Bible crosses. I got the tribe of Levi. <laughs> I'm blessed. So, uh, you know, putting on your Sunday best. So I'm going to talk to you about our Sunday best. I want you to think about this. If Jesus was going to come to your house today, how, if, if I told you Jesus was coming to your house at 12.15, how many of you over the next several minutes will be thinking, oh, oh gee, I'm going to have to clean out the fridge. Man, I'm going to have to look under the vanity and get rid of the magazines. Oh, I'm going to have to de-cookie the, the, the computer. I'm going I'm to have to, I'm going to have to look under the bed. Good enough. You look under the bed, you'll all find a couple of pair of socks. They may not match, but they're probably under there. That and the dust monsters. But how many of you, if Jesus would come to your house, would y'all, would y'all clean it up? Or would you just leave it the way it is? How many of you would uh, go around and you start picking some things up and you'd make sure you didn't have any underwear laying around? I mean, you wouldn't just leave your underwear laying around, would you? Uh, and how many of you, if Jesus was coming to your house, and, and you, you heard, ding, dong, and you went over to the peephole, or you went over to the blinds, you know, looked out, uh, and, and, and you saw Jesus standing there. It wasn't law enforcement. It was Jesus. How many of you just swing the door open and jump in his arms? How many of you go, oh, just a minute. Jesus is on the porch. Clean up. Would you? Would y'all do that? Or would y'all just let him in, underwear and everything? No, you, you'd clean house, wouldn't you? Certainly if he gave you a warning. I remember growing up, Mama would load up the Plymouth Station wagon. I was going through some photographs. Uh, I hate to tell you, they're, they're actually uh, photograph young people. That, uh, that's this, this image that's printed on this slick, glossy piece of paper. And, and those of us over... 30, we actually have albums or at least a big box we put them in. You know, not just something on your phone. You know, and send it off to people. I mean, we actually have these things called photographs. Now, if I tried to explain phonographs, that'd take a while. But Mama, Mama would always make me dress up for church. Paula, Paul, Perry, Pat, and Pam would get in that Plymouth station wagon, no air conditioner, bald tires, roll down the windows. And off to church we go. And I was going through these black and white photographs of me growing up. And it seemed like every few pictures it was me standing in front of the Plymouth Station wagon, dressed for church. Or I have one with me standing on the top of the old, I think it was about a 1952 Chevrolet. I'm standing up on the hood. I'm about this tall. But almost all of them I'm like this. <laughs> and I had hair right in here. And had a burr haircut. How many of you know what a burr haircut? Not a bear haircut, but a burr haircut. Uh, and, and, you, and that's because Mama did her own hair, you know, like that. And uh, I'm standing there in my Sunday pants, creased, got on my black Sunday shoes. Now, these are not just shoes and, and pants. These are Sunday pants. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I had on white socks. You know, how many of you remember penny loafers? Yeah, if you was rich, you put dimes in there. Mine were blank. Y'all remember dressing up for church? Look at us now. We're so dressed down. We're so comfortable. There's my grandson. He's got on shorts and flip-flops. But thank God he's in church. Yeah, thank God. Now, do you know in the Bible, in my 44 years of ministry, I've never preached on Zac Zacchaeus. Y'all know the story of Zacchaeus? Who has not heard the story of Zacchaeus? It, he's the, a guy that was short. I don't preach short sermons. And I sure don't want to preach about short people because Janet would take that personal. 
And I try to never make eye contact. And I, I'm, I'm not really a real tall fellow except on the inside. But in the Bible, it says, uh, when Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Now, Jericho was a city of great commerce at this time. And it says Jesus was passing through. Now, let me ask you a question. If Jesus was coming to your house today and he was passing through town, as I'm speaking, there are hundreds if not thousands of people, depending on the length of the message, <laughs> passing through our community right here, driving by. And over the 27-plus years of this church, we've had uh, men and women driving 18-wheelers, pull into our parking lot and come and join us. We've had people on vacation driving by, see our church and stop and come and join us. There are people passing through our community even as I speak. If Jesus came to your house today, would you be embarrassed? Would you be prepared? Would you welcome him? Would you give him a bologna sandwich? Would you give him a bologna sandwich and a bean bag and give him the remote? You know, when, you, when you're at somebody's house, a man always holds the remote. Because we are not interested in curtains and HGTV. Come on. And if I get up and I've got the remote and you're at my house and you're a guy, I'm not going to hand the remote to some lady. I'm going to reach over to my best friend forever. And I'm going to hand him the remote. Because I can expect him to stay off of the decoration channels. And if he doesn't, that's his last visit. <laughs> would, you, would you give Jesus a bologna sandwich? Would you give him a beanbag chair and a remote? No, you would at least, unless that's all that you have. You would give him your best. Here Jesus is walking through town. And as he is passing through the town of Jericho, the Bible says a man was there named Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector and very wealthy. So, you know, this guy's really got some bad stuff going on in his life. He's not the most popular guy in town. He was not only a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector, and he was wealthy. And the reason he was wealthy is because he was a tax collector. In the days that Jesus lived, tax collectors would put a property tax on your property, and then they would add a premium on top of it, and they would skim it off the top. He was not liked. But I want you to notice what happens with Jesus here. Jesus walking through town, just passing through town. This guy, Zacchaeus, obviously has heard about Jesus. He's heard that he's coming or passing through town. And here's what the Bible says about Zacchaeus. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus since Jesus was coming that way. I wonder what this guy Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, who was wealthy, despised and hated, rejected by his own people, wonder why he wanted to see Jesus. What had he heard? Wonder what he thought. Wonder why he was eager to go to the effort to even climb in a tree to see him. And here's what really captures me about this story of Zacchaeus. Jesus Walking along in the crowd, just literally just going to pass through, but somebody caught his attention. You know who it is? This little rich guy that other people hated, and Jesus looked up, and there's no record here that he said, hey, who is that up in the tree? He looked up. I believe it's the word of knowledge operating. He looks up, and he says, Zacchaeus, come down right now. I'm going to your house. How many of you are willing to get out of your tree for Jesus? Yeah, I've been out of my tree for decades. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once, welcomed him gladly. He didn't even have time to clean house. And when he came down and off they went to the house, all the religious people said, oh, that Jesus. There he goes off with Zacchaeus, a sinner. Can I tell you something? Jesus loves sinners as much as he loves saints. Is that awesome? He loves the broken, the busted, the disgusted, the bankrupt. He loves us. He knows your name. He wants to give you a new name. But he wants to spend time at your house. That's one thing the Holy Spirit made possible when Jesus ascended and released the Holy Spirit. Is that Jesus said... I will never leave you or forsake you. When he sent Holy Spirit, it made it possible for you to become the house of God 
Will you welcome Jesus into your house? Would you have to clean up? You know what? Kind of a joke that we use in Christianity is we catch them, he cleans them. What we think we have to do is we have to get cleaned up so we can serve him. Listen, the beauty of serving God, the beauty of living for Jesus is he does his own cleaning. All he wants is a relationship. He said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. And Zacchaeus hurriedly came down and welcomed Jesus. And then the religious folk, raise your hand if you know some of them. Don't, you don't have to do that. Immediately begin to criticize. Immediately begin to criticize Jesus. Are you willing to love people that don't look, smell, or talk like you in order to be, and still endure the criticism? Oh, he hangs out with sinners and Republican, I mean publicans. Oh, that Jesus, you know how that Jesus is. Didn't seem to stop Jesus, did it? But Zacchaeus stood up. He welcomed into his house, and then he stood up and he said, He said, Look, Lord. Wow, wait a minute. Here's a guy hanging out in a tree. He gets out of his tree. Are you willing to get out of your tree for Jesus? I've been accused of being out of my tree more than once. Oh, man. Y'all remember back in the 70s and 80s? Man, that dude's out of his tree. You need to get out of your tree. You need to quit just looking down to see Jesus and welcome him in your house. He welcomes him in, and then he immediately says, Look, Lord. Now, the word Lord is a Greek word, kyrios, which means a title of honor, expressive of respect and reverence, which servants greet their master. Jesus says, hey, I want to go to your house. He comes down out of his tree. People then immediately start judging. Oh, the church is the worst. Oh, we judge people that don't look like us. Don't act like us. It's so easy to do as if we're qualified to judge, huh? And as soon as he comes into the house, Zacchaeus stands up and he says, Lord, look, I'm going to give away half of everything I have to the poor. Y'all remember the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? He said, I've done everything the law says I'm supposed to do. Jesus said, go sell everything you have. What's the difference? Jesus never said, Zacchaeus, that's not enough. But what you see about Zacchaeus, he said, I am going to give half of everything I have to the poor, and anyone that I have stolen from, I'm going to give them back four times what I took. What do we see? We see Jesus who's gone from just wanting a glimpse of Jesus in the presence of Jesus. Something supernatural has already taken place. In Christianity, we'd call it an act of repentance and restitution. What did Jesus say? Jesus didn't say, hey, Zacchaeus, here's what you've got to do to have a relationship with me. All he said was, come down, I'm going to go to your house. And immediately in the presence of Jesus, something begins to transform in Zacchaeus where he begins to see himself in a light maybe he never was willing to see before, but something was happening. Jesus is a transforming Jesus. He will clean house if you'll just let him come and welcome him into your presence. He loves you. He knows your name. He has a plan and a purpose for you. How many times have you heard me tell you that? Here's this little guy, despised and rejected. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this man. Now, not salvation in the sense of being born again, because that didn't happen until after Jesus rose again. But see, when Jesus shows up, he wants intimate relationship, and that transformation takes place first by being born again. Salvation an encounter with Messiah, an encounter with the Savior. I mean, it's cool to be in a church and bump into one another and laugh and talk and eat donuts, drink coffee and talk about Jesus. That's great. And I, and I value that. But I believe the great transformation takes place when we go beyond connecting with each other and we connect with Jesus. Deep in the woods of Saline County, sitting on 300 acres of land, lies a place unlike any other. To paraphrase former Razorback coach Lou Holtz, it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from here. When you first arrive, you see pretty quickly that it's a special place. It's a place that looks very odd when you first pull up, kind of in the middle of nowhere, a little western town. But as soon as you start talking to the people and walk inside the buildings, you see that this is home. This is where kids come to heal. This is where they come to be a part of a family, something that most of them have never had before. It's a place to where we keep kids 
kind of away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and the stresses they have so they can come out here and refocus on kind of what they need to, to focus on. Uh, they've had a lot of abandonment, a lot of issues with their family, so they can come back, kind of recharge and reset their life. This world was created from a vision of a man who knew the need for it all too well. It started as the dream of our founder, Pastor Perry Black, because he grew up in a children's home very similar to this one. His mother actually worked there, and he had the dream of helping even more kids than what she was able to do. This dream turned into a reality is a welcome site for the kids who come here. Many have endured what can only be considered a nightmare in their previous home life. Here are just a few of their stories. When I ran away, um, I was raped by one of the teenage boys I stayed with. My dad, he would use our mom's money for drugs. So our mom, she would have to go get money from her mom and she'd have to get the money to help us get more food and pay the electric bill. I always told myself I would never do meth or anything because that's what my dad and my mom did. And I seen how I was ruining their life because my dad, he's just been in and out of prison my whole life. He really ain't never been around. These chilling accounts of fear and abandonment can be difficult to erase. But out here, these kids are given an opportunity to make new memories with a new family. Little by little, as we love them through it, we see those walls start to come down. And when they start to, to smile, you know, and, and to go out in public and talk with people and have this confidence about them, or when they're able to get off of some of their medications that they've been on for years, and then eventually, you know, make an A on their first test and then graduate high school and we get to put them in college. And it's just to be like their mom and dad and watch them grow and, and change and overcome those circumstances that they've been through, that's incredible, what a privilege. The place itself is undoubtedly unique, but the people at Second Chance Ranch are the biggest reason this foster home is so successful. I think the best way to say that we help them get back to a normal life is just create a routine, show them a love that they've probably never felt before, a lot of times these kids come from a place that the people that they love the most have been the ones that have hurt them the most. And we want them to know that we are a safe place, that we love them unconditionally. It's not a normal group home. It's like a real family. Like the kids here, they feel the love that, mm -hmm. you know, all the, the staff here that, um, that they have for these kids. It's just a safe place to receive the love and the healthy relationships that they should have had, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus revelations here's simple it is here's what the Lord showed me about Zacchaeus number one he was despised rejected by his peers how many of you have ever been in a church you felt rejected criticized made fun of put down hurt by your peers how many hadn't experienced that somewhere in school somewhere in a university somewhere in a workplace who hasn't felt rejected second point's real simple I can relate to many of these he was nothing special to look on. Now, I joke all the time about me being handsome. I know you know that's a joke. I grew out of handsome a long time ago. I'm just down into perseverance and survival. <laughs> I ain't into combing my hair. I'm into finding my hair. I'm not into brushing my teeth. I'm into soaking them in a glass. My mother had false teeth. I got up in the middle of the night one night, went to the bathroom, and took a drink, got bit right on the lip. Come on. It was terrible. It was a terrible experience. It's tough being poor. There was nothing about him impressive, but if you read the story of Jesus in the, in the prophetic scriptures of Isaiah, he was despised and rejected, and there was nothing about Jesus that would have drawn you to him naturally. We have got to get beyond relating to one another in a natural way. We've got to get beyond relating to each other because somebody's big or somebody's wealthy or somebody's poor or somebody's white or somebody's black or somebody's red or somebody's yellow or somebody's something. Listen, Jesus loves you. He knows you by name and he wants a personal relationship with you and so do I and so do we. That's what the church is. 
so maybe you don't feel like you fit in, and maybe you feel like you stand out, and maybe you don't feel like you're anything special, but I'm here to tell you, you are special. You're special to God, and you're special to us. And if you feel busted and broken and disgusted, and you've been hurt, you've been criticized, you've been put down or abused, Jesus loves you. He wants you to come out of that tree and come down and let him come to your house. He wants that relationship with you. Well, here's a really insightful point. His wealth made him comfortable. I'm sure he had a nice house. But it didn't make him happy. It didn't satisfy him. I want you to think about it. Nowhere in Scripture does it say he was married. So I want you to think about Jesus is going over to Zacchaeus' bachelor pad. I don't know. I was a bachelor for a very, very brief period of time. I decorated my own place. You know, you've got to have a fluorescent wall, a black light, and a velveteen picture of Jesus. <laughs> then you got married, and that was the end of that. How many of you remember that a stereo center meant a concrete block and a concrete block and a board? Stick a stereo in there. Hey, man, come over and look at my stereo. Right on. I don't know if Zacchaeus had a stereo. I don't know if he's a bachelor, but I can just imagine Jesus comes to his house. He had wealth, so he probably had a really nice system. Probably had a chariot with spinners. <laughs> Dice hanging down from the top and a little hula girl in the back. Every time he'd pull the horses, she'd go, Ooh. I don't know. I doubt it. But you know what I'm trying to say. Here's what I love about Zacchaeus. He climbed that tree. Jesus, unless you become like a child. I just want, how hungry must he have been to be in the presence of Jesus that he was willing in spite of the crowd to climb that tree? And then to make matters worse, you know, there's a rule in church. You never call out a visitor. You know, we this morning, we clap for visitors, you know. We've had visitors raise hands. We've done all kinds of stuff to try to make visitors welcome. But a lot of visitors don't want to be seen. Here's Zacchaeus. He shimmied the tree. He's probably wanting to be obscure. He's up there behind the leaves. You know, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, oh, no. Come down, I want to go to your house. Oh, my house? Take the velveteen picture of Jesus, turn it around, turn off the black light, you know, open the curtains. Jesus, do you like Toby Mac? I don't know what he said. I don't know. <laughs> I enjoy myself. I told you that's fun. He humbled himself like a child. Are you willing to humble yourself like a child? A child has somebody, a guardian in their life, that helped them a long life. You know one of the great joys of being a parent is you get to help your children select their friends. One of the responsibilities of a guardian is to help children make wise decisions, and when they don't, help them learn concept. Never mind. I better not go there. <laughs> He humbled himself. This is what I loved about Zacchaeus. Here's this rich guy. Everybody hates him. He knows everybody's got out. There's he. There's that old rich guy right there. And yet he, he humbles himself like a little child and climbs up a tree. How many of you would shimmy a tree to get a glimpse of Jesus? A lot of people won't even take a moment to get out of bed and come to church. All right. He hurriedly obeyed Jesus. Jesus said, come down immediately. He immediately, y'all don't have to leave the church. I love y'all. If you're visiting, that's a youth pastor. He's just messing. He's got to go to He hurriedly obeyed Jesus. He hurriedly came down. Jesus gave him a word he hurriedly obeyed. Don't sit around and pussyfoot like a cat on a hot tin roof. Get down out of that tree and get Jesus up in your house. Say, come on, Jesus, come on in. And then he welcomed Jesus wholeheartedly. Listen, no half-hearted Christianity. Jesus didn't half die on the cross. He didn't just pass out and wake up in a cave. He died. He gave everything because he loves us. Next point, he not only repented, Zacchaeus repented. He recognized something transpired in the presence of Jesus. He recognized he needed to give it all to Jesus. And he said, Lord, here's what I'll do. I recognize, I recognize who you are. And I recognize how I feel in your presence. I want this burden off. So I'm going to give half of what I have away and everything that I've ever stolen. I'm giving everything back four times, whatever I took. Wow. Man, that's transformation right there. Can I ask you a question? What is it you're holding on? 
You know the reason a lot of people don't like to go to a church like this where the presence of God was moving so sweetly? Because we start thinking about just how human we are and how desperately we need Him and we don't want to feel guilty at church. You don't have to. Grace is great and mercy is free. And then he experienced that transformational power of Jesus. Have you ever had friends come over? Have you ever had friends come over? You said you went to bed with family and after several days it was, you were ready to come home. I'm sure they were ready for you to leave. <laughs> How many of you ever host the, the, you know, here we're getting ready to go into the holidays. How many of you have ever had friends come over? You cook, you clean, you vacuum, you dust areas that, that, that you haven't dusted since the last time you had company. My wife yesterday was going down the hallway sweeping. I said, what are you doing, getting ready for the housekeeper? Took me, took me 43 years to talk her in to let me hire a housekeeper once a month. And she's cleaning before the housekeeper comes. I'm like, are you kidding? She's coming. Let her earn her money. Come on, let's throw it out on the floor here. I'm like, clean out the refrigerator. Have you ever had friends and family over and most of them just watch you cook and serve? And then they sit and visit while you clean up. And then they leave. You got all the trash and all the junk and all their casserole dishes. You've done all the work. You ever felt that way? You work so hard before they get there, so hard. And they're in there talking about stuff in the living room, and you're in there. If you need anything, let us know. I'll tell you what I'll let you know. I need something. Either get your buns up in this here and you clean this up, or you can go ahead and get in your little Prius and go home. Just thinking out loud. But instead, no, it's fine. Until they leave, and then you lay it off on me. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just using that as an example, because our family's not like yours. We're the normal two in our family. And I'm interested in the hearts of people. I want people to come down out of the tree. Quit trying to have to climb to go find it, get a glimpse of Jesus, and let's just go out there in the highways and byways and say, here's Jesus right here. He's living big in me, and he loves you. And I love you. I don't care if you're pierced, tattooed. I don't care if you got hair, no hair, green hair, blue hair, purple hair. I don't care. Only thing I care about is where are you going to spend the rest of eternity? And Jesus loves you right now. He wants you to come down out of your tree and experience him in your personal everyday life. Will you welcome Jesus into your home? Will you let people walk in this door and know that Jesus is alive? That means you help them find a seat. You help them find a place where they can be touched and their children can be ministered to. Oh, can we be that kind of a church? Are you willing to come down out of that tree and let Jesus come in and clean up everything in your life? Let him do what he does. Hi, this is Perry Black, and I want to let all of our viewers know that all of my messages are free, and you can download those at FamilyChurchBryant.org, and I'll see you next week right here on VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection.